George Lucas as an old friend. I had gone to film school with him, and uh, Gloria Katz, my wife slash writing partner, and I had uh, written American Graffiti with him, so you know we felt very comfortable, and uh, this was an, another collaboration. After American Graffiti, George had said that he had found this comic book about a duck from outer space that lands in Cleveland. And he said it was, it was just, he thought it was very funny. And he thought it was, it was kind of very film noir with this absurdist element. And it was, we sort of forgot about the idea. But then by the sort of early 80s, we began to think, well, maybe there is, as ridiculous as this idea sounds, maybe there is something that would be very entertaining in this film and very unusual. I think the attraction was that it was going to be entertaining and fun and sort of off the wall. Hey. I mean, it was very different than the things we had been working on previously. So we looked forward to that. Yeah. Oh. Oh. So oh. Are you ready for an incredible story? Uh. Oh. Help somebody, help! Oh. 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 is obviously no place for an intelligent, sensitive duck. Well, Steve Gerber, we met with him and talked to him about the comic book and how he saw Howard's journey on Earth. And, uh, you know, he had a very unique uh, sense of humor. So Gloria and I sat down and started working on stories. Actually, the original story that we came up with was Howard in uh, Hawaii because we thought it'd be sort of fun to shoot there. And we didn't really want to explain why Howard ended up on Earth, but, you know, everybody in the movie business being very literal, you have to start from Duck World, explain what happened to Howard. And we sort of were resistant to that, but we had no choice. So we actually went back and rewrote it. We actually used quite a bit of the uh, original story of how Howard arrived from the Steve Gerber comic. And there was always sort of goofy humor, and there was a love story, and yet there would be suspenseful, darker elements too. So we incorporated all of those, and it was a juggling act. Listen, huh? you got some place to go? Hey, if I had some place to go, I certainly wouldn't be in Cleveland. Casting Beverly was interesting because I think we looked at every young woman, every young actress, dancer, singer, because she was in this group, Cherry Bomb, which is a group we had to put together. So we did a lot of casting. We saw a lot of beautiful girls. I remember I was running around at thrift stores trying to buy stuff to audition with so that I could look like a cross between Madonna and Cyndi Lauper. I remember trying so hard to find rosaries and weird jewelry and everything for my big audition at Willard and Gloria's house for Beverly Switzler. Well, we loved Leah in Back to the Future, and George really loved Leah also. And we thought that Leah personally has a great sense of humor. When I got the part, they sent me a bunch of the comic books, which I thought were hilarious and really funny and irreverent. And, um, and I read the script. It was a very, very, very hot project at the time. I beat out a lot of girls. I mean, plus I got to play a rock star, which was really a fun. Part of the casting process was to get a young women who, who looked like they would be in a group and could play instruments and so forth. And, and Leah actually learned to do it. I really wasn't a singer, and I had to work really hard. They, they worked me every single weekend, and they kept threatening me that they might not let me really do the singing. Even halfway through the shooting, I don't think they were entirely convinced whether they were going to keep my voice, and they did. And I was a dancer. I grew up as a ballet dancer, so the dance part was fun and easy, except I had a very, very heavy guitar that I had to play, with, and it kept bashing me in the leg. Hickory dickory duck. Tom Dolby was great. He was our music director, and he worked with the group, and he put together a group that I thought was good. You know, he did sort of avant-garde rock and roll, and so he was there almost the whole time helping us do the musical score and helping choreograph all the movements. Listen to me, small visitor.